Hello and welcome to Hoi Kai News this December with me, Daniel Franklin. And me, Mitchell Froude. Coming up on this month's episode. S2 pupils take part in this year's shoebox appeal, wrapping nearly 30 shoeboxes for children who usually don't get anything at Christmas. We start a new series of interviews speaking to teachers about their jobs at Hoi Kai School. This month, Ross Lothian speaks to Miss Powell, a new maths teacher here at, here at the school. S1 Art and Design pupils take a look at the problem of litter in our school, in our community and further afield. Students take part in Fire Skills Employability Program, learning what it is like to work in the emergency services. And S2 pupils have been skipping class and raising money for charity. Most years in Hoik High School, second year pupils participate in the shoebox appeal. The pupils bring in specific items to be packed in shoeboxes and then are sent to places in the world where children do not usually get anything for Christmas. Pupils in S2 responded well and many brought in lots of goods. In the end, 29 shoeboxes were filled and sent away. Natasha Burns has more. As some of you may know, the school holds a shoebox appeal that helps families that live in poverty and are not lucky enough to have what we have. Since 1993, there has been over 124 million shoeboxes wrapped up and sent around the world to deprived children that live in third world countries. This is a worldwide project that the United States, Austria, Finland, New Zealand, Canada, Spain and the UK all take part in. Can you give us a bit more insight to what the shoebox appeal is for? Yep, sure. Um, as you know, not everybody in the world gets a good Christmas um, and so it, the shoeboxes are gathered and sent to countries like the Ukraine, um, Eastern Europe and India, even as far as countries in Africa, to children that would normally not get much or anything at Christmas time. So it's to give them joy, something to play with and hope and to know that people around the world do care about them. When did the high school start to acknowledge the shoebox appeal? It's been going for a long time. Um, I'd say at least 12 years. It used to be done in the assembly hall. Mm. Uh, a former teacher called Miss Mitchell used to do it and here in the Faith and Philosophy Department we've been doing it for about eight years. Why do you think it's important for the appeal to be at our school? I think it helps our young people to realise how lucky we are and to do something kind for others. The young people at the school are incredibly generous as are their parents and I think they know that we are privileged to live in a country where we've got um, usually enough food to eat and, and presents. I know some people don't get enough in Britain but generally we do really well so it's good for them to, to do their bit for others. What sort of things did you put in the shoeboxes? All sorts of things, um, toys, really simple toys like cars and teddies, um, even hygiene items like toothbrushes um, and soap because some of these kids, for that, them that's a luxury to have face cloths and sponges and things as well as hats and scarves for some of them that's really exciting to get because they have really old pan-me-downs. Now for some news in brief and any S6 pupil who would like a mock interview with the Rotary Club should let their pastoral teacher know by Tuesday the 1st of December. On Monday the 30th of November, the school will be shut for St Andrew's Day holiday. The Garden for School vouchers competition has started Make sure to collect as many vouchers as you can and bring them into school to give to your tutor to be in with a chance of winning a prize. S1 to S3 pupils are now being offered the chance to attend a five week block of boxing. The sessions will be from 4pm to 5pm in the gym and are completely free of charge. For more information on any of these stories, make sure to visit our website www.hoikainews.co.uk now as part of the S1 Art and Design syllabus, pupils in the department spend more time looking at the problem of litter in our school, community and further afield. Each teacher takes a different approach to the issue and Mrs Murray decided to make this a team project with three of our S1 classes. They each chose a teacher to be their litter loot and took their photograph to use on a body. Mrs Murray and the S1 classes hope that the project makes people stop, look read and possibly draw awareness to the litter problem we have in our school. Now back to Mitchell in the studio with more on our new monthly segment. Thanks Daniel. Teachers come and go quite often here at Hoik High School, 
So the team thought that it would be a great idea to start a special segment on interviewing new and old faces here at the school. Our first interviewee is Miss Powell, teacher of maths and former pupil at Hoik High. Our reporter Ross Lothian had a chat about her time as a student here and how she uses Twitter to engage with students in maths. Do you enjoy working at Hoik High School? Uh, yeah, I really, really enjoy working at Hoik High School. It's fab working with the teachers that were my teachers when I was at school and everyone's just been really, really lovely. Um, it's funny because I come in and I'm no like a new member of staff. Everyone, well, quite a lot of people know, know me and are able to say hiya and I'm like, oh, I don't know who you are. But it's lovely and I'm really chuffed how everyone's just accepted me and I can't wait to work with more people. Do you feel like you have made a good choice of coming to Hoik High School? Yeah, like totally the right choice. Um, I used to have to travel an hour every day, so no having to do that hour is just amazing. And I was really worried to come to to Hoik, but I think I've totally made the right choice and I'm no looking back at all. What was your favourite subjects as a child? Uh, maths. <laughs> no, it was definitely maths. I absolutely loved maths. Um, Mrs Murray, the old... PT back a bit was just amazing and I just absolutely loved um, everything she'd done and I just wanted to follow in her footsteps so um, this is why I'm here and I'm really really chuffed that I've, I'm a maths teacher. I did want to be a primary teacher at one point but I think there was more scope for uh, secondary teaching so I'm really really chuffed I made that choice. When you were in Hoyt High School did you win any awards? Uh, I won, I won one award um, for it was something to do with administration. When I was at school, I done the minutes for the parent council, and I think Mr. Williamson, the head teacher at the time, put me up for that award. So that's the only award that I've ever won. I think. We see you have a Twitter account. What is it used for? Uh, I just use that Twitter account to to keep in touch with the pupils when they're at home. So. Um, exam period is really close to the Easter holidays, so often when it's the most important time, they kind of get in touch with you. So I'm more than happy to keep in touch with people like, all the time. So just this weekend, I got a tweet off a of people doing his homework, and he was able to ask me, how do you do something? I was able to tell him more or less straight away, and it just means that he doesn't have to wait till the Monday. So it's just really good to keep in touch with people. A group of pupils from this school recently took part in the Fire Skills Employability Programme. Over the week-long course, the group of pupils learned what it is like to work in the emergency services and acted out a series of events which included putting out a car fire. Ronald Yule was there and spoke to Michael Jaffrey, station manager. Um, this is a first for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in this area. We've run a Fire Skills Employability Programme. It's basically giving some life skills to, to young people about what it's like to go out there in the big wild, wide world, you know, um, in employment, uh, things like health and safety, uh, you know, how to communicate with people, working with people as a team, uh, manual handling techniques, you know, uh, CPR, you know, all, all sorts of different uh, topics. Um, so, yeah, they've worked really hard this week. Um, the school's been very good, you know, uh, providing us with, with, with some people, so young people to take part. And they've, they've had a good time. I was Mr. Forrester just came around the school and asked if I would like to try it. I was kind of very thinking maybe I would not like it, might not enjoy it. And, uh, came the first day, it was pretty cold and chilly outside and stuff in the rainy. It wasn't very enjoyable, we were working with Moses and I uh, didn't really enjoy it the first day. I was kind of judged it a bit quick. Second day it got a bit better and just further on through it was getting better and better every day. Started to enjoy it and the end result's been great. We've uh, worked on cutting up cars, uh, taking cars out of cars and stuff, getting a cars out of the smoke building. Um, we've done lots on CPR and stuff, worked with defibrillators, everything like that. It's just been really good fun, really had a good laugh and stuff. This week, S2 pupils have been skipping class to raise money for charity. Every year, Pupils in S2 complete the British Heart Foundation Life Saver course, Heart Start. Pupils learn the skills to cope with six different life-threatening situations, including how to put someone in the recovery position and how to do CPR. This initiative has been running for now for seven years, in which time well over 1,000 young people have been trained in these vital life-saving techniques. The British Heart Foundation provide all the equipment for this course, 
including videos and rescuation dummies. In return, the pupils complete a skip skipathon to raise money for this life-saving charity. Well, that is it for this month's episode of Hoikai News. Make sure to check us out on all our various social media pages for the latest updates over the Christmas holidays. But from all the news team, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you later in December for this year's Christmas music video.